today I'm going to be reviewing the Mamiya 7. I've owned mine for about five years now, and I thought perhaps I could offer some detailed pluses and minuses on why I love the Mamiya 7, but why it may or may not be the right camera for you. I think first of all the draw of the Mamiya 7 is its lenses, which are incredible, and the fact that it's a rangefinder with all the attending pluses and minuses that go with a camera being a rangefinder. In today's video, we're going to, I'm going to break it up into three parts. The first is detailed pluses and minuses from my experience with it. The second, I'm going to take out the camera just for a little bit and shoot through three rolls. Maybe you can get a little bit of the feel of the camera from that. And finally, in part three, I'm going to show you some photos that I've shot with it in the past. And I'm also going to offer some very zoomed in views from 80 megapixel scans and show you what you can expect with it resolution wise. So let's go ahead and start with the pluses and minuses. First, the resolution of the camera is incredible. The lenses were designed in the early 90s. I think if you read Mamiya's sort of hype for the camera, they'll say that they're computer assisted design or something like that. And it's not just hype, the lenses are incredible. I'm going to link below to some third-party tests of lens sharpness that were done with, I believe, T-Max 100 film, and they show that the Mumia 7 lenses, and especially the 80, are ridiculously sharp. They're as sharp as their tests would allow them to test. Also, in keeping with that sharpness, the rendering of the lenses is pretty modern and uh, clinical. It's not super classic, it's not super a filmic the rendering of the lenses so if you're looking for a super classic rendering you might not actually be super happy with the look that they provide but for me i generally see it as a plus so one alternative there would be for instance to go with a roll eye if you want a camera that is sharp but classic in its rendering and if you want a camera that is decently sharp like not super sharp and also classic in its rendering there are a ton of options which i won't get into Another huge plus is the weight. The Mamiya 7 is really light for the format that it shoots, and it's also reasonably small. Uh, it's a plastic build, uh, and it wouldn't be anywhere near as light as, if, as it is if it weren't a plastic build, so... Since it's a rangefinder and it's also a leaf shutter, meaning the shutter is in the lens, not in the camera body, there's no mirror slap and you can handhold this at, at as long of a shutter speed as any other medium format camera that there is. So for instance, compared to the Hasselblad V-Series, which has a big mirror that it slaps around, uh, there, there are some workarounds for that. Uh, or say a Pentax 67, which has a huge mirror, you're going to have a lot easier of a time getting sharp shots at long shutters. So the Mamiya 7 is partially battery operated, but it's only for the meter and the um, shutter. So it's an electronic shutter, meaning that the shutter is extremely accurate in terms of the shutter speeds and there's no drift to speak of, which you'll experience with mechanical shutters. The downside, of course, is that you have to put a battery in it and eventually the battery will go out. However, it's good for dozens of rolls, at least 30 or so. So you'll go a long time in between and you can carry a second battery the battery also is still in production, it's cheap, it's about a 4 or $5 lithium cell. Importantly, it's a rangefinder, meaning that you have a rangefinder style composition. If you aren't familiar with what a rangefinder is, basically you look through a piece of glass to the actual world and you have superimposed on the world uh, four frame lines that show you the corners of your frame. And you can choose to position those however, basically. And so you select what part of the world you want to capture which for me is exactly how I like to think about photography. I think photography, you're basically just picking what part of the world you want to be in your frame. Also, unlike some other film cameras, especially honestly 35 millimeter cameras, so not, not as much medium format cameras, it's still serviced. I had mine serviced by Precision Camera Works maybe four years ago, they did an excellent job. They are not particularly cheap, but they will fix your camera, they'll fix it right with, with a warranty. I think that's a pretty sweet looking camera. Very 90s. One more plus of the camera. It has an incredibly precise, I've checked it against my Seconic meters, spot meter, 
it's uh, maybe not the best choice for auto exposure because it's a spot meter, but when you want a really detailed picture of what your exposure would be for any particular part of the scene, it's incredible. It's my favorite built-in camera meter that I've ever used. I find it really easy to meter with. I generally use it to sort of get a sense of what the scene is like. And then the darkest part of the scene that I want to be exposed with good detail and texture, I'll expose for. And that is a good compromise between highlight and shadow detail. I don't care if my deep shadows get a bit blocky because um, I think that adds a little bit of trauma and mystery, something like that, to an image, and it's not a bad thing. And now let's move on to the minuses of the camera. So first of all, there are a bunch of minuses related to the fact that it's a rangefinder. Again, I love rangefinders, but there are some minuses. A lot of those minuses have to do with focus. So rangefinder focus is generally depending on like the base length and other technical factors, but on the Mamiya 7 it's not super duper precise. It's pretty accurate, um, it'll work well enough, but if the rangefinder drifts out of calibration, which it's easy for that to happen, especially if you're pairing up one person's lens with another person's camera and neither of them have been CLA'd in 25 years, you will sometimes get out of focus photos, especially at portrait distance. Closely related, the Mumia 7, like any other rangefinder, doesn't focus super close. So what that means is that for a portrait, the closest you'll be able to get is a bit, uh, a bit more than head and shoulders, as in you won't be able to get quite to head and shoulders. So it'll go sort of down to their bust rather than down to their shoulders. And I don't think it's an ideal portrait camera, but if you're doing environmental portraits, maybe you'll be happy with that. Also, the lenses aren't super fast, I believe. The fastest ones in the format are f4, and a lot of them are slower than that. The two that I have, the 65 and the 80, are both f4. I find that's plenty. That's already equivalent to f2 in full frame in terms of um, depth of field, so that's really shallow depth of field. Uh, but maybe if you have super low light needs and you need to shoot medium format, you won't be content with that. Also, the focus scale, which I'll... So the focus scale, which you can hopefully see here, is calibrated for... 35 millimeter. So theoretically, this is, for instance, if you focus at infinity, everything from, let's see, a little bit uh, farther than 10 meters away to, of course, infinity will be in focus, is what it would tell you. But actually, that's not quite true um, because this is based on 1960s film camera standards. So what I generally do is I use two stops wider uh, depth of field scale to focus my photos. So for instance, if I'm focusing a landscape where I want infinity in focus, I'll set the focal distance for f4, but shoot at f8. Or set the focal distance for f5.6, but shoot at f11. I find that works pretty well, and I am a pixel peeper that cares a lot about sharpness, so I think you should probably be happy with that. Also the rangefinder patch, which is what you focus, so it's a it's a split image, so you have you have one image and another image, and what you do is you just line up the two images and then it's in focus. That is not super bright or contrasty, it's decent, it's usable, but if you're used to say a Leica, you probably won't be super content with it because Leicas have super good viewfinder patches. And then finally, just there aren't a ton of lenses for it, and the telephotos, for instance, will be pretty weird to focus because the like rangefinder framing will just be in the very center of the viewfinder and most of it will just be the world and it's kind of hard to frame that way. And also just there aren't that many lenses. Most people use the 65, which is equivalent to like a 32.5 full frame, that's a wide, or the 80, which is what I tend to use, which is equivalent to a 40 in full frame. And then there are a couple telephotos and there's also a 43, which is a super wide, really expensive, requires an external viewfinder. Some people love that lens. It's supposed to be great. I don't care for that focal length, so I do not own one. So yeah, that's about it as far as pluses and minuses. Like I said, the minuses all have to do with the fact that it's a rangefinder. So if you like rangefinders and you want a super sharp medium format 6x7 rangefinder, it really doesn't get any better than the Mamiya 7. Uh, some other downsides, so versus the Mamiya 6, which is a square format, uh, the lens does not collapse into the body, so it's not quite as compact as that camera. And 
compared to, I believe the Plowbell Makina has a similar thing where the lens collapses into the body, so it might be a bit more compact. But the glass on that camera is not quite as good, and I don't believe it's interchangeable lens. Uh, and those are my super detailed and nitpicky pluses and minuses after five years and many dozens of rolls through it. Now to show off the resolution of the camera, this is a stitched scan I shot Delta 100 on a tripod at I believe f8, uh, and hopefully you can see just how ridiculously sharp this camera is, and I believe this was with the 65 f4, the 80 f4 is even sharper, which is crazy. So that's it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, I love the Mia 7 for its combination of sharpness, small weight and size, and it's pretty much perfect camera for me. My complaints are minor and escapable, and that's about it.